if you're a coach you're probably somebody who like me is very empathetic you are in your emotions a lot you connect with people and that is a amazing skill it's a superpower to have but at the same time it can also be this self-defeating cycle that we get stuck in and i know there's been peaks and troughs in the last 10 years of my life where i have experienced what i would call defeat um where i just feel like i've given it my all and things just don't work out right and like specifically in business it's like you work really hard you sign a client another client leaves and you then are just constantly chasing your tail and then sometimes you have a few clients come on it's great but then maybe you let in somebody who wasn't a good fit and that client ends up being an energetic drainer they end up being somebody that you just don't look forward to having calls with and you know that like every time you speak to them afterwards you just have to take a break like man i'm so tired and sometimes you end up building a client base of these types of people and you have to check yourself because it is very easy to attract the wrong types of people because our marketing message we often put out we're trying to just guess what people want and we're trying to just say things that we think are going to create clients and really you can create clients at different levels of consciousness you can create a client who is already empowered who is going to show up and do the work who really understands the value that you have to provide for them and they also respect boundaries and expectations but on the flip side it's also your responsibility to set boundaries and expectations if you go into a relationship with somebody a professional relationship and you do not set clear boundaries and expectations then of course your boundaries and expectations are going to be stretched so it's really important that we set them from the get-go but also we uh, re-establish them consistently with people if people do start to overstretch you set those boundaries it's really hard if you're if you're somebody who is an empath and you are very empathetic towards other people you probably have people pleasing tendencies and it's something i've had to work on consistently over the last 10 years in business because i don't like letting people down and usually that becomes a negative feedback loop because i'm so fixated on not letting people down and that is like the front of my mind that i end up creating that for myself and it's like, no matter how hard I try, I just end up letting people down. And I was stuck in that cycle on and off for years. And I was still making good money as a coach. I was still signing clients. I was still getting them results. But sometimes, like, I would get a really good result with a client and it still wouldn't meet their standards or expectations. And so they'd end up leaving. And I'd put all this energy, all this work into this person and they'd, they'd leave anyway. And I'd just, you know, take a step back and just feel this like deep sense of defeat and like man this is so hard like it's like pushing a boulder up a hill all the time it's like if, if i take my foot off the brake it all just falls apart and then i have to rebuild and it's it's really hard to get momentum and i've been through this this cycle a couple of times in my life and what i have noticed is the way you create momentum there's two things it starts with you and it starts with the standards that you set for yourself. I call this self-leadership. So you as a coach, especially if you're coaching a lot of people and if you want to move into the space of, you know, facilitating group coaching and having groups of people listen to you and respect you and, and follow through on your actions, you have to be able to lead yourself first. You need to be self-led and that's hard, right? It's really hard to do. That's why so few people are successful in this space because they're incongruent. I've worked with a lot of coaches over the years where they would be teaching or telling people to do things that they weren't doing themselves. That's incongruent. And people are not going to follow through on actions that you tell them to do that you are not willing to do yourself. That's really important to understand. And again, I've been through that. I've, I've been in periods of my life where, you know, eight years ago maybe, I was health coaching and there was a period where i was going out and partying every weekend and i was getting really drunk and then i was telling people not to drink right and even though i was you know in shape and the people i was working with were overweight it's the actions 
and the values that you live true to that are important. So for me, I wasn't respecting my health by going out and getting obliterated every weekend, right? That wasn't me looking after my health. And I would justify it in my head. But the truth is like, I wasn't living true to my values and I wasn't living true to the expectations that I would set for clients. So you need to set expectations, people. But you, first of all, you need to set them with yourself and you need to live true to them. You don't necessarily need to have achieved everything and be perfect, right? That's not what this is about. Life throws curveballs. There are going to be challenges in your life. But when you expect something of somebody else, and it's very easy to see this in other people, right? The hard thing is doing it in yourself. But you see something in somebody else and you can see the challenges they go through and you say, well, I know you're going through this challenge, but even then, like this is the opportunity to grow, to develop, to work through this and, and pressure test this thing in your life. You need to ask yourself, are you willing to do that yourself? Like, are you willing to put yourself through the ringer and do those things? And lately I've been going through a process uh, called monk mode. I'm like just over two weeks in. And I chose a hard period of my life to do this. Like. I've got a lot going on in my life right now with business. I've just moved to Australia. I've just applied for my permanent residency here. I'm getting married in two months. I've got social events coming up. I've got a lot of stuff going on in my life. Like I'm, you know, I'm pretty busy, pretty stressed. But this is the perfect opportunity to put myself through a challenge, you know, and the challenge being both in health and business. Like I'm applying this to creating content and to focus, but also to reading and to, um, you know, maintaining you know, my training, my nutrition, my sleep, not drinking alcohol, not eating sugar. And the first week was really, really hard, right? Because I just felt like everything was on top of me. And I got to the end of the week, I took a bit of a breather and the second week became easier. And the reason the second week became easier, I didn't change anything. The reason the second week became easier is because I adapted and became better, right? So through pressure, we adapt. That's how we develop as humans. Like that's the whole purpose of growth. Like we're not, you know, I really believe like fundamentally our purpose here is to to grow, to heal, to evolve. Um, and you look at the history of humankind, that's, that's what we've done, right? We've consistently grown and innovated. And as we grow as humans, we learn new things, we develop our skills um, that we can pass on to other people and then they develop and so on and so forth. And so for me, like it's, really important to challenge myself not just when things are easy but when things are hard because in a few months time when i come back from my honeymoon and my schedule is going to be very different and i have a lot less on uh, personally i'm going to have a lot more time on my hands i'm going to have a lot less external stresses i'm going to be really well equipped to go harder in other areas of my life right and that's what's important here. It's important to understand that self-leadership isn't about perfection. It's about doing the things that you expect of other people and doing them yourself. And if you cannot do it yourself, do not expect it of other people. And if you live true to that, that's what I think a good coach does, right? It doesn't matter what type of coach you are. If you're a mindset coach, if you're a health coach, if you're a business coach, if you're a relationship dating coach like you need to live true to those things right like if you are a relationship coach and you're preaching like ideologies about you know how to show up powerfully in a relationship and you're not doing that in your own relationship there's a conflict if you're teaching people about strategies in business that you're not doing yourself there's a conflict if you're teaching people to eat healthy and not drink and you're going and getting obliterated at the weekend there's a conflict and so when we feel conflicted in ourselves, that passes on to other people. And going back to the message of like feeling defeated, when I think October time last year, I'd just been through a stretch. So we, we moved to Australia in September, we traveled from the UK, traveled around the US, traveled to Australia, got settled here. Two days after, or literally, I think it was the day after we got this apartment, I flew to Bali uh, for a few nights to check out our wedding venue. And then I flew to the UK for a wedding. I was there for like a week and then flew back to Australia. 
So my body was fucked. Like I was, I was really jet lagged for like two weeks. I was jet lagged. I just couldn't adjust. But also like I had long periods of flying. I was, my body was like in pain from being just on these long haul flights and being in uncomfortable positions. My sleep was terrible. My energy was terrible. And so I put off, put, put myself out there, right? I wasn't creating as much content. I wasn't having conversations with people. I wasn't booking sales calls. It was like subconsciously I was trying not to grow my business. And the reason why is because there was a conflict internally within me. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of it at the time, but there was a conflict within me. And that was the thing that was holding me back from growing my business. I came back to Australia at the start of November and I got really dialed in, right? On my nutrition, on my sleep, on my health, everything, my routines. And I, you know, back in, um, October, I had, my, I had my worst month in a long time. I think I did about 5K. It wasn't good. November, I did the groundwork. I think I did 9K in November, but I did the groundwork in November and then December, I did 25K, right? A lot of the time people write December off as like the worst month because it's coming up to Christmas. That was a great month for me. And the reason it was a great month is because I did the internal work and I got congruent with leading my own life. And then in January, again, I was doing my visa application, especially the last two weeks of January. I was on like, I like, I had to get it done by a certain date. Otherwise I would have had to leave the country. Like I was on a three month kind of um, tourist visa and I had to get my permanent residency done before that ran out. Otherwise I would have literally had to leave the country. Uh, so really, really stressful and I had a lot to do for that. There was a lot of stuff. And like, as I went through the process, I was discovering like more and more and more, there was like more things I needed. Um, and my partner, she like, she had to do stuff her end and she was also really busy with work. So I was feeling really shit about that because I put like unnecessary pressure on her and it created conflict. And then I started drinking again and it's nothing crazy. Like I wasn't like going out and binge drinking or anything, but I just got to the point at the end of the day where I was just so mentally fried and so stressed because I had so much, so much like friction that I would just go and, and have a glass of wine in the evening. And for a lot of people, like one glass of wine in the evening doesn't seem like a lot. But if you are reliant on that to switch your brain off in the evening, that is not a good habit to be in. And you have that glass of wine in the evening and then, you know, my inhibitions are lowered. I'm stressed, so I eat a load of sugar, all right? I've just had some alcohol and a load of sugar before bed. Guess what? I'm going to have a shit night's sleep. I have a shit night's sleep. I end up waking up later. So instead of getting up early, I was getting up at like 7.30, 8 a.m. And then I was starting my day on the back foot. And then I was drinking loads of coffee. And then the same perpetual cycle happened for like two weeks. And I caught myself out, right? Because I've been through that before. I caught myself out and I knew like this can't carry on. This is not the person who... I am or want to be and so and I wouldn't expect that of other people if I was coaching somebody in their business and their personal life was a mess and they weren't looking after their health I would call them up on that I'd say look like we need to focus on this first because your health is the foundation of anything you do in life if you don't have your health you can't do anything like you can't effectively grow a business if you're not healthy and so I called myself out on it and I started working on my health well uh, at the start of February and that was you know, I was making good progress. And then in March, I just got it really dialed in. So I was like, okay, like I'm not drinking. That's great. Like I've been, I don't know, a month and a half, two months without having a drop of alcohol. Um, I was still relying a bit on sugar in the evening. And I, I think that just became like a bit of a pattern in the evening of having some sugar. And I wasn't as focused as I wanted to be. Like I definitely, between the end of January and start of February, I made some big jumps and I, I noticed some shifts. But there was, there was, I still wasn't sharp. That was the thing. I was still feeling quite tired, lethargic. I wasn't feeling sharp. And so I started this monk mode protocol and got really, really dialed in. And now I think I'm 15 days in, just over two weeks. Now I'm feeling mentally very, very sharp, right? I'm waking up 6.30 every morning, which for some people is not super early, but for me, like that's pretty early and that's, that's, that's a good place to wake up. Gives me time to get up, meditate, stretch, get to the gym, read, look after my nutrition, get to bed at a decent time, getting outside multiple times a day, going for walks. Um, 
and just really focused with the work I'm doing, showing up more powerfully on calls. Uh, I'm not reactive, I'm not people pleasing, I'm holding boundaries and expectations with people. And it's just helping me, because I'm leading myself more effectively, it's helping me lead others more effectively as well, even subconsciously, right? Like even just energetically, if you have more certainty and confidence in yourself, that bleeds into every area of your life. It bleeds into your intimate relationships, right? Like my relationship with my partner has never been better. It bleeds into relationships with your clients, right? Like every client I'm working with now is amazing. Right? I'm not working with any drainer clients anymore. I'm not attracting that into my life anymore. And I haven't done for the last, I don't know, six months or a year. I, I, the last client I've had that was like a drainer was probably a year ago, right? I had like a client who was just a pain in the ass. And I don't think since then, I don't think I've worked with anybody who's been like that. Everyone I work with now is amazing. They're great. And so bringing it back, that's a reflection of, of the work I'm doing on myself, on my health, on my mind, on my body, on my soul, like that, that work that you just do each day is really important. And if you are justifying shitty actions as a means to an end, like you're just going to be like this for a long time until you break free of that, right? Man, I just need to make money. If I make money, everything's gonna be okay. You make the money, but you burn yourself out in the process and then you can't sustain it. And guess what happens? You make the money, things are good, things drop off, your health isn't good, you're getting sick, you, your mind isn't in a good place, you're getting depressed, getting anxious, you feel defeated. And you're back at square one, you're like, man, I've got to build this thing again. I've got to, I've got to push myself, I've got to push, I've got to force. But it's not about, it's not about force, right? Like when you set solid foundations for yourself and your health and your energy, you experience more flow. There's a really good book on this called Power Versus Force by uh, Dr. David Hawkins. Talks about this in great detail. And there's a concept that I learned in 2016, which, which for me, it took me a while to get my head around it. But when I did and it clicked, it, it really made a lot of sense, which is like the four levels of consciousness. And the lowest level of consciousness is the level that most of us live within. And I live within for a very long time in my life which is the, the state of to me, that victim mentality of everything is happening to me. When you live in that state, it is very hard to be productive because you're just in a very negative cycle. You feel a victim to life. Everything feels hard. Everything feels heavy. You feel defeated. You are in that state of, of to me, right? The next stage, which a lot of entrepreneurs find themselves in, and I was in when I first kind of heard about this kind of concept is the state of by me. So when you're in the state of by me, that consciousness, you're forcing, you're pushing, you're hustling, you're making things happen by me. I'm gonna grind, I'm gonna make it happen. It's not very sustainable. It's not very healthy a lot of the time. We just put immense amounts of stress on ourselves and you know, usually, and you see a lot of type A personalities like this in the entrepreneurial space where like they might make a lot of money. He's like, like, especially like the loud, like kind of alpha, you know, macho guys you see and their relationships are shit and they are lacking compassion and they're lacking empathy and everything is really hard. I've worked behind the scenes with a few of those guys who outwardly seem like they've got their shit together but actually internally they're a mess and the way they treat their teams, the way they show up in, in their personal lives isn't good. The third stage of consciousness is through me. And this is where life is flowing through you and you are more expressive and you are able to feel life more, right? If, that, if you've ever been depressed, you'll know what it's like to go through the motions and just not feel anything. But when you're, and when you're really stressed, you'll know what it's like where everything's just forced and everything's just happening really fast and, and you don't even know what's going on half the time. You're just pushing and pushing and pushing. But when you take a step back and when you let go of control and you stop trying to control all these little things and you act from a place of power, not from a place of force, but from a place of 
groundedness from a place of trying to create something of meaning in your life to help other people to show up in a way that is impactful for the people even just directly around you you are a positive force of nature you're a positive person to be around you start experiencing flow in your life and things just just start working out for you it's hard to explain like i've had this you know a lot in my life the last kind of six years things have just I've, I've just met people at the right time and like the perfect opportunities have just appeared at the right time and i've made decisions where instead of them being a really hard decision i've just made it and then it's worked out that is a really powerful state of consciousness and the last stage was really hard for me to one get my head around but to conceptualize in a way like how is this actually useful which is the state of as me and this is where you see everybody as you as a collective consciousness i am you you are me and what i mean by that is like you you are me experiencing life through a different perspective so we're all the same source of energy but i have different stories i have been through different things i grew up in a different place i had different parents I had different external factors i had different genetics i have a different body but on a deep level we are all the same we are all equal when that it took me a few years to really get my head around that and through kind of like deep meditation is how i kind of started to experience this and when i started to this is a whole nother video but when i started to experience god in my life again and this universal creative energy that's when it started to click that we are all interconnected and there might be things that piss you off about other people but it's not the, the it's not the soul of that person it's it's the ego it's the surface level stuff that's coming to surface that triggers you and mirrors things that trigger for you that state of consciousness is is really powerful because you connect with people on a deep deep level and then from there again ties back into leadership you are able to lead people effectively because you really connect and you really empathize with other people like empathy is such a superpower because we're all in this together and i believe that like our purpose is to grow and evolve so that we can have a positive impact on those around us and when we have a positive impact on those around us and empower them with the beliefs the tools the support to grow in their own way they flourish and they have a knock-on effect that has a knock-on effect with the people around them it's this overflow effect right when your cup is overfilling it helps other people fill their cups their cups overfill and it just has a, a really positive ripple effect through humanity how that applies to business is a lot of the time when we're trying to create things especially as coaches we get really bogged down in the weeds we get really kind of just zoomed in on like these little specifics of like okay i just need to fix this thing i just need to fix this thing if i fix this if i work this out if i just have this one funnel everything's going to work out and then it doesn't or it does and then things fall apart and then we have this anxiousness and this okay now i need to fix it now i need to fix right and you're just constantly trying to fix things it's because you're operating from a low state of consciousness if you create things from a higher state of consciousness an emotional state a energetically and healthy state you're building solid foundations and brick by brick you're just building things and building things and the more solid a foundation is the harder that structure is to topple and i'll just wrap up on this because it's a really good kind of analogy for this like i'm on the 24th floor in this building i live in it's like a massive skyscraper right the taller the building the deeper the foundations right so i don't know if you've ever seen a, a big building be constructed a skyscraper but it is just a massive hole drilled into the floor right and they'll spend maybe a year just drilling down 
into the floor, into the ground, and creating these foundations to be able to create the skyscraper. skyscraper. It's the thing that keeps it sturdy. All right, you don't just build it from the ground up, otherwise it'd fall over. Same thing's true in your life, right? That deep foundational work in your personal life is often the things that, you know, are really hard. The digging deep, forgiveness, working through trauma, working through, you know, the past, building healthy habits, becoming better at communicating with yourself and with other people, being able to lead yourself effectively, lead other people. And then the actual building, the actual thing that's scaling is the the surface level stuff that people see, right? The content you put out or the funnels you build, the sales calls you have, the clients you have, the money you make, like that's all just a result. And the surface level stuff of the foundational work that you do as a human. So hopefully this video is useful for you. Um, very different one today. Just felt kind of compelled to share this because it's a conversation I've had with a few people. It's something I've been journaling on a lot recently and reflecting on a lot because it's important. And I, I get so many people just asking me for like these quick fixes, right? Like, what's the ad strategy? What's the ad targeting I need? What's this? Like, what's this one thing I need to blow my business up? And it's like, there isn't one thing, right? You might even get a good result out of doing this one thing, but that's not going to give you the fulfillment and long-term growth that you actually need. Like your business is a reflection of you. So you need to work on yourself first. That's going to reflect into your content, into the conversations you're having, into the client calls you're having, into the experience that you give other people. It starts with you, it starts with self-leadership and being able to do the deep work on yourself. So hopefully I've not lost you. If you've watched this far, then thank you. Um, and hit subscribe if you're not already. If you have any comments or feedback or you know things you'd like me to uh, cover in another video, then comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.